Good morning, folks. We've got a couple articles to hit today, but also a closer than usual look at some solar activity. This will include jumps in the frame, a backup satellite, coronagraphs, and sunspot evaluations. And we'll start there with the last 24 hours on our star. We know there weren't any major eruptions, but there was a small pop near center disk. The problem is that there's a jump in the frame, some missing time on SDO right as that event occurs. You could probably notice that skip with the pop signature near center disk. Here it is again a bit zoomed in, looks like a coronal clearing event by that sunspot. So I went and pulled other satellites including the Proba 2 swap and it does look like there was a small southward directed clearing associated with the C-class solar flare. Not a big one. That is confirmed by the lack of plasma ejecta seen on the SOHO coronagraphs both C2 and C3. I'll admit it had me spooked for a moment, but just a moment. Sunspots are numerous this morning, the group of active regions is actually in a bit of decay on the north, and their flare chances are dropping. But the southern incoming group appears big, complex, and still turning in to face us this coming week. We'll be keeping the closest eye on this one here. First up in the articles today is this, a story about the east coast and how it's sinking, and doing so vastly more quickly than they say sea levels are changing. If you are familiar with the fact that no two places on Earth show the same amount of sea level rise, and in fact, some show a drop, that is because of isostatic readjustment, also known as post-glacial rebound, and it's really all we're seeing in terms of sea level change. Some areas lifting, others sinking. And since transforming sea ice to liquid water actually causes a drop in sea level since ice has more volume than liquid water, this article is a good reminder of what is really happening when they try to scare us about sea levels, and why people like Obama, John Kerry, and other fear mongers still buy mansions by the coastline. They aren't worried. They just want you to be. Lastly, folks, a study on some of the subtle electromagnetic field impacts to the central nervous system. The ELF and radio frequency bands studied here are often directly measured by magnetic field reverberation at the surface level during a geomagnetic storm. Same exact power levels. I was actually surprised to see some positive things like enhanced memory potential and neuroprotection, but also exactly the same negative items we have discussed many times before. Impact to the hippocampus, which negatively affects cognition, which means getting dumber, and induction of anxiety, which is the trigger for emotional instability. That one is not paywalled, so deep readers enjoy. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.